Yo, what's going on guys? Hope everyone is doing really, really well as normal. Trying to hit another popular question that I've been asked recently. So this video, I'm gonna try to do my best and make a practical, basic video on computer security. First and foremost, I'm by no means, really no means a master or even intermediate level at any of these complex security topics. I'm just gonna try to talk about it from a very practical and really introductory level and just hopefully make it as useful as possible. So I'm not gonna do any detailed lecturing. During school, I took one, no, I think I think I took two graduate level courses in computer security and just to be completely honest, they're really, really dry and that's just my opinion. But one of the courses was actually taught remotely. So when we went to lecture, the, the professor was talking to us from a camera. Like we looked at him through a screen and not many people went to lectures and most people fell asleep. I've personally never really met anyone who's really, really into computer security. Most people just know about it, can kind of talk through it, but no one I've met at least is really into it. But if you wanna be into that and you have that mindset of hacking computers, designing the perfect secure systems, then all the power to you. So in this video, I'm gonna talk about basic computer security from a very practical perspective. I'm not gonna do any kind of lecturing. I just have four points to talk about and let's do it. First and foremost, we have to understand what really basic computer security words mean. Initially, I thought this video could maybe be like 10 common security words you should know, but I looked it up on YouTube and there's already a lot of videos like that that already exist, they're already really good. I didn't wanna just replicate that. What do I mean by basic words? But you should understand basic words and how they apply to computer security. So authorization versus authentication. What is a symmetric cryptographic protocol? What does asymmetric mean? What does SSL stand for? What does it provide? These are just kind of basic concepts that you should look up on your own and it's not gonna be covered in this video at all. So for point number one, I'm just gonna assume that everyone's gonna get a decent foundation for these words on their own time. My suggestion for this is, what I actually did was just take some time, like 30 minutes to an hour, watch one of those lectures on YouTube about basic computer security. Once something comes up that you don't understand, just pause it, research it, understand what it kind of means, and go back to the video, all right? And do that first, and that's point number one. Point number two is actually really, really simple. I just wanna say everyone should be a good consumer of security and technology. And what do I mean by that? Large companies, well actually any company, they spend a lot of time managing and configuring their security system. And you as a consumer, if you're using them, you should take advantage of whatever they provide. For example, if Google login requires two-factor authentication with a phone, and you have a phone, you should use two-factor authentication. They're making that feature available for your benefit as a consumer. If you have a tough time remembering all your passwords, all those secret questions, all your credit card numbers, just get a simple password management software. There are a lot of them. I use 1Password. It's simple, it works. It's not the greatest, but it manages all my info, so I'd never have to remember any password. So point number two is just be a good consumer of technology and security, so that's what you can do to keep yourself safe, all right? All right, third, third and maybe most important point that I wanna make in this whole video is how computer security applies to you if you're an application developer or software developer. 99% of the time, actually maybe 99.9% .9 of the time, you are not gonna become a computer security expert. I am no computer security expert by any means, and I don't think most people are at all. So first understand that and you're not gonna be inventing the next security countermeasure. There are already a lot of people that think and develop stuff for computer security and you're not gonna do it better than them. So what's the next best thing to do? But as an application developer, you have to introduce and put security measures into your application as best as you can. With that said, I hope, I don't want to discourage anyone, right? If you really want to get into security as an engineer, that interests you, totally go do that. You probably need to get a PhD and really advanced stuff to really push the envelope in security. But if that's what you want to do, definitely go do that. But for the 99.9% .9 of application developers, the rest of us, 
We just have to use the best security measures. My one advice for this is that if you're an application developer, use what's available to you and understand why you should be using it and how it kind of works. So for example, for web application development, the popular web frameworks, Django, Rails, they already have a lot of security things built inside that framework for you. So as an application developer, you just have to be cognizant of it and use it. All right, let's see. Most popular web frameworks, one thing they do for you is they put special tokens in all your web forms to prevent cross-site forgery. And they just do that for you. You don't have to think about it. Most frameworks can handle proper SSL redirecting and enabling of secure sockets layers with just one line of code. Web application frameworks also help manage many server-side secrets for you to help you kind of hide sensitive information. For all the backend developers out there, I know many of you guys who work in the backend or write server-side code for web applications, you're probably designing APIs a lot, making RESTful resources and doing all that stuff. Well, you're probably using a framework to help you do that. Those frameworks probably provide default header token authorization techniques for you. They probably provide default throttling techniques for you so a user can't just hit your website 1,000 times a minute all those kind of things are done for you already and you just use it. So it's literally one line of code. User A can only access my API 60 times a minute and you just do one line and someone else's code will do more of the logic for you. Point number three, point number three, I just wanna say the major, the major point in this whole thing is that when you use different frameworks to help you design your applications, there's already a lot of work already a lot of legwork done for you in the realm of security and just use what's already available and don't try to reinvent the wheel and try to do your own prevention of cross-site scripting, all right? So just use what's available for you and that's the best thing you can do as an application developer 99% of the time. The fourth point I wanna make is that, what did we just cover? We covered securing your application as an application developer and you always have to do that. Well, the fourth point I wanna make is that you also have to secure the computers that your applications are running on. Usually there might be a dedicated like network security or system administrator person to help do this, to set up the computers as securely as possible. But if you're just working on an application by yourself, you're one or two programmers, you'll probably have to do both, secure the application and secure the computer. So again, let's just do the same thing, run through a bunch of examples of what securing a computer really means. One example could be installing SSL certificates on the computer. So different apps running on the computer can always reference those certificates. You could also set up private networks to kind of hide your computers away from the big bad internet. Another form is setting up the right firewall so the ports aren't all opened and maybe installing antivirus software. So these are all points to secure the computer itself and it's kind of in parallel with securing the application. So that was actually a really important point. I'm just gonna say it again to try to drive it home, but point number four is that you should spend some time to secure the computer that you're using. And remember point number three is securing the applications that are running on that computer. All right guys, that's the end of the video. Let's just do a really quick recap of all of these four major points. So first one is just understand the basic words. Don't be completely clueless about what basic security words means, like what is RSA? Um, number two is remember, be a good consumer of security. So that's using the security features of other applications to just protect yourself. Third was as an application developer, use all the security features made available for you. Don't reinvent the wheel, just use them in your application. And last but not least, remember to secure the computer itself. Last point I wanna make is that if you wanna really get into the detail, detail, details of computer security, like how the real cryptographic algorithms work, I am not the right person to go to for that. If you really wanna understand like how like RSA works, how AES works, like the history behind it, how those things have evolved, but you should look up other resources to get that information because I'm not the right person to provide or lecture about that at all, all right? This whole video is just me trying to speak to it practically for the 99% and 
hope it was helpful. All right, please like the video again, subscribe. Please, if you have any questions, comments, concerns, leave it in the comments and I'll try to respond as soon as, as, soon as I can. All right, guys, take care.